All right, let's kick this off. So DZPD builds video season three, week two. I titled tonight's stream today's sponge. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I am gamer tag Burt Reynolds, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Golden Voice of Gaming. Ne and Killjoy, who's joined me tonight. You can see him on yeah, the screen there. Whoop-a-doo. Dancing it up. Hello. It's for Friday. We're night late. late. Um, due to network outages on the West Coast last night with Xbox Live. That's right. Um, that so, yeah. Right. Thank you, Microsoft. Late. Or the internet. Or Obama. <laughs> whoever, whoever you want to thank. <laughs> That's right. There's got to be somebody we can blame for this. Damn it. We, we the, could pick technology. someone. That's right. It's not technology. Exactly. Well, let's cover the fun and important stuff first tonight, Megan. Let's um, do that. One, we're back in the division. We actually have a build to look at. That's crazy. Yes. Um, I'm so excited gonna, about that. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about the state of the game for a minute, um, which is where our title tonight came from. And we're going to drink some beer. Um, I will be testing out... Short Fuse Brewery, local, local brewery. They're Lucy Juicy Hazy IPA. Lucy Juicy, nice. I was thinking about Hazy IPAs, Negan, because they're like the the rage. And I was like, maybe Hazy IPAs is what happens when the people who listen to loud dubstep and drink Monster Energy drinks, maybe this is what they drink when they get older. <laughs> but then I re realized. Uh, In fact, I, I mean, so, see, okay. tall, tall can. <laughs> tall can, um, true. Got that monster monster look to it. Then I realized they drink White Claws. That's what people who listen to yes. loud dubstep and drink yes. Monster Energy drinks while they're game. When they turn 21, they go to the claw. That's right. Um, I don't know what, what's with the hazy IPA thing, but I'm going to try this. I'm not a fan of IPAs, so I'm going to torture myself this evening and uh yeah support a local brewery there you go what's on tap what's on tap for you negan on tap for me so i've decided you're... as i said last week i've decided to go with a brewery that i can pronounce and a beer style that i can pronounce so i went with carl strauss which is a san diego brew so it's a local to california and it's red trolley ale it's described as the best batch of an amber irish red ale hmm so St. Patrick's Day Tuesday, tonight. Negan. Saint that's Patrick's also Day. another reason. That's right. I'm not. <clears throat> I will have. I will have the perfunctory, you know, Guinness on St. Patrick's Day just to get through it. But I always look at the uh, half and halves as well. So I do yeah. like the Guinness and usually like a Harps or something like that. So Harp making the black and tans. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Although Play Irish your, don't say that. Kick Murphys. Mm-hmm. Drink your black and tan. Flog and volleys. Yeah. I like good stuff. Flog and Molly, some tossers. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds like fun. I uh, uh, don't know what I'll be doing for Patrick's Day. But uh, uh, de definitely have a Guinness. Uh, although speaking of hazy IPAs that you went there to start with, is I've actually been trying those as well. I don't like IPAs very much, but I have discovered that hazies is, is enough of a difference that they're actually I'm enjoying a couple that I have found. So you may enjoy the one you're having, even though you're not an IPA guy. I've found that I like New England IPAs, which have a very citrusy mm -hmm. flavor. They're hazy as right. well, and I like those. Um, this one's pretty hoppy, and right. not in the not in the citrusy way, like in the oh. very hoppy way. A cyber cheers as I try mine now. To you, Golden Voice of Gaming. Hmm. Mm. All right. Are you trying that out of the bottle? Are you not? Are you being savage tonight? Mm -hmm. I can. can. Tall boy. Tall boy. Okay. I have. I actually have dubstep playing in my headphones, but you can't hear it. <laughs> okay. Good. Thankfully, I cannot hear it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some X's into my name shortly. Burt Reynolds XXX. XX. That's right. So that must mean we're going DZ to be all trolley rogues and stuff like that. That's the plan. Well, okay. first I'm going to show you the build I'm going to troll with. So yes. I actually have several. I have several builds already built. I don't know why there's an item missing, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, 
I'm actually gonna. I ch- I chose to show you this last one um, first, since we have many weeks of this, and I'll show you what I got. So this is a, a CC base build, little CC. It's still very weapon damage focused. Um. So what am I doing? Yeah, that's a good it's question. Been a long, so it's been a long time since you've done a build, so it's gotta gotta get back in the swing of things here, buddy. I know, I feel out, I, like I'm out of place. I don't know what to say. Um, I'm running the uh, survivalists because he's got a fire grenade, which I like. Um, I'm running, now see, I would like to have the, um, uh, what's that one gun? The pyromaniac? I haven't found it yet. Mm-hmm. So instead I'm running an M4 with optimist, maxed out assault rifle damage on it, because I bought the Glory Days from the vendor this week, and I bought two. And I put one in my recal library, and I kept one for myself. And But I rolled high assault rifle damage on this. And I'm running the Grudge. This is the gun you get, I think. You get this by default, I believe, when you finish the game. Which has perfect vindictive. Killing an enemy with a set effect applies you and your allies within... 20 meters, 18% critical hit chance, and 18% critical hit damage for 20 seconds. It's actually pretty strong. Um, So I'm running that, the grudge. And you can see that thing hits pretty hard, right? 95.3 thousand for an SMG at 900 RPMs. Yeah, that's pretty good. It hits pretty stinking hard. And where you experience that on the other side of it is actually does hit pretty hard as we experienced. Not to put any spoilers out there. It does. It does hit pretty hard if you get hit by it, yes. Not, no spoilers, but you will get hit by it. Um, <laughs> I have a double-barreled shotgun just because reasons. I like them. Um, I am running a Providence mask. I'm running two pieces of Providence to get the critical hit chance. And uh, you can see here, actually, this has a this has pretty decent roll. I rolled the armor onto it. One piece of blue. The rest are reds. And I have a uh, anarchist cookbook, which you get that, during you, you get during the story. But I got another one now. So this applying a status effect decreases total weapon damage by eighteen percent for twenty seven seconds. A long time to get a pretty good bump weapon damage. I'm running a Fenris chest for the assault rifle damage. 15% weapon damage rolled onto it. And it has spark damaging enemies with the skill increases total weapon damage by 15% for 15 seconds. So when I hit somebody with the fu- airburst seeker mine that I'm using, I get a total of 33% weapon damage for 15 seconds. And then if I'm able to uh, continue to damage them with another skill or something, I get lucky. I have I have more spark. I get, keep getting that damage. I'm running a firm handshake for gloves, um, which has max rolls on all things. This is how this dropped. This is a god roll Damn. piece. God rolled. Should be some sort of tagline for that one. God rolled. Yep. SMG damage, weapon damage, status effects of resistance. The status effects is the key here, right? I was going to say, so far, looking at your other pieces, it looks like you're playing into status effects, so usually it's not something you look for on your gear, but apparently, I'm guessing, it's going to come into play at some point on your build. Well, once you light somebody on fire, that status effects is what keeps them burning. Mm, okay. Fire sucks, too. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> critical hit chance on that uh, is what I'm looking for here, another 10%. Um, weapon damage, again, this came with 10% status effects. So, good deal there. And the other piece of Providence, I rolled skill haste onto this. The weapon damage wasn't perfect, but it was good enough and had good crit chance. And then I rolled some skill haste on it, trying to get the skill haste down on the Pokeballs. Now, if we were running in a group with a healer, I wouldn't run this revive hive. But because I've been run, running solo, I've been running a revive hive. And since we're probably two men in it, we're not going to have a healer. I'm going to run it. And then the air bursts. Why am I running the air bursts? Because the 
cooldown is really short on the air burst. So I don't really care if I kill him with this thing. I don't care if I do anything. I just need to light him on fire for a couple seconds. Long enough to hit him with the grudge. And if I can get into a cycle there, I end up in this really nice cycle where I've got a constant buff of crit chance and crit damage for me and the whole group. And I'm getting all my weapon bonuses off my chest and my backpack. Hopefully providing a little CC to the group as a whole. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's actually pretty effective. We just finished a tier 4 CP. Comes in handy, man. I'm going to tell you what, it's it's a nice little group comp thing. It's got decent survivability. I'm not like the squishiest thing ever. I'm not real tanky either. Um, but it's what kind are, of What fun. are your stats? What are your stats end up as like your gun damage and your ammo armor and stuff like that? Yeah, so I uh let's see here. Um weapon damage on my assault rifle is 88. Critical hit chance is 52. Crit damage is low at 41. No armor damage. Health damage is at 6. Um, yeah. Um, all weapon damage bonus at 73.3. Assault rifles at 40. Submachine guns at 25. I don't That's so weird. I don't understand how that works. But um, perfectly wicked and spark, obviously. My armor's at about 840. Um, max health is at 270. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not, again, it's not like ridiculous or anything. Um, right. But it's. And you also. You also did okay. with skill haste with skill haste and stuff like that on it. Do you. Before, skill haste wasn't a big deal in. Prior to Gear 2, 2.0, do you think it's a bigger deal now? Is it worth looking for on certain pieces at certain times? Yeah, I, well, the skill haste is, is the best source of it's going to come because they nerf the heck out of the mods. So the best source of it's going to come on your armor. Mm -hmm. If you can get good skill haste on your armor and you're using a skill like I am because, uh, you know, I'm using those air bursts. Um, Definitely want to have skill haste, and probably quite a bit of it, honestly. Um, I wouldn't take skill haste over crit chance. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> like, the game right now, the way it's built, and we were going to talk about this. So we got to end game, started putting stuff together. Anything above normal, the enemies are disgustingly tanky. And unpleasant to play against. Hard's okay. That's usually what I'm running my map at. Sometimes I run into challenging. <clears throat> they wreck you. And they are just bullet sponges. At heroic level, like that CP4, I mean, you're talking several magazines to take one guy down with a damage-focused build. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, which you which you can't go in with just a damage focused build because they'll take you down pretty quickly. They at, well, but see at this point, and this is how bad it is, right? They take you down so hard that I, I built a you know one point nine million armor tank. I feel just as squishy with that as I do with nine hundred thousand. They do so much damage, and. uh Status effects that bypass armor, like fire, kill you in a second. I mean, it's like you don't even see the damage coming at you, you're dead. So, right. what did it buy you? Another half second? I don't know. Um, I've gone more to the theory of I'm just going to burst him down as fast as I can. We're going to run a mission on hard. So um, bef before we jump to the mission on hard and stuff like that, now you talk about how they're how they're more they're more tanky, they're they're more, more bulletly spongy. Have you noticed a massive difference when you're running solo versus running a, with two and three? Because according to the state of the game, that the the solo and the two member scaling is pretty good. It's not horrible, but they're saying once you get to three or four, the the scaling just goes off the rails, and they recognize that. Have you noticed that as a big difference, or 
the scaling does go off the rails. That said, I, I've been running a lot of CP4s by myself. Mm -hmm. And basically, the only way to do it is to get yourself in position where you're near the ammo box. Like, you have to right. fight through to get yourself to a spot where you can kind of hold up near the ammo box because you're going to be hitting that ammo box a lot. Yes, during a that is true. Like, clearing one CP4 out by yourself you're going to be hitting the ammo box on a pretty especially, regular basis. Especially, and again, I don't know if this would be a spoiler or not, but especially when those special guests, quote, can just pop in and show up on your, your adventures. Well, and those special guests will pop up even when anyway. you're just running like a, C, a CP1. I've, if they I've show up, just out they the are the, just running around. Yeah, they are the tankiest, man. Mm -hmm. Um if there again, you could have 600 rounds still left after taking a CP1, and you'll use all 600 of those rounds trying to take Good. those I'm, guests down. I'm so glad to hear that other people are having the same experience I was. I thought maybe it was just my build was just so horrible, but no, we're all having no, it, so. no. I mean, it it is unpleasant. It's very unpleasant, and um, so something's gonna have to be done. I mean. I, I'm up for a challenge. Like, I'm up for a challenge. I love that you can set the global difficulty. That's fun. Yeah. There are a lot of things that are fun. Like, I'm challenging doing something like um, a territory control or um, a broadcast. Super fun. But then things like a control point are not fun. <laughs> I'm challenging when you set the world to challenging. Mm -hmm. Um and heroic is not fun. Yeah, I have indeed. a build that I can take down heroic content with like a breeze. It's a skill build. I didn't show it tonight because it's pure cheese. And it's like, I don't even feel good about it. You, you're basically just hiding the whole time. And your skills do all the work. And you don't even pop up to shoot. Because if you pop up to shoot and somebody looks at you... With a dirty look, you're dead. Is that fun? I don't, I, that That's not why I play a loot shooter. I don't play a loot <laughs> shooter so I can prop up a turret and throw seeker balls and, and hide. But yeah, uh, you, don't, you don't play a loot shooter to not shoot? That's crazy. It's crazy talk right I there, know, Mr. Right? Reynolds. It's crazy talk. I know. So speaking of the, the global difficulties and stuff, you said you normally run it on hard? Is that if I heard you correctly? I usually, if I want to, like, just go, you know, cruise through the world, I run on hard. Do you think at hard it's a pretty good spot on, on hard? It's a little easy, but it's perfect for mindless, like, farming. Okay. Like, if I'm going to go do a crate run and I don't want to get stuck in epic battles around every time I run into a named enemy or decide to do a side you know, side event, like a, a broadcast or whatever hostage. Mm -hmm. Um, if I have it on challenging, that turns into like a 20 minute thing. So if I'm gotcha. going to just go run crates, I, because I, I have discovered this, this is the thing, right? Like if I'm going to go run orange crates and this is the other problem with the game right now, the loot quality is terrible. It doesn't matter if you put it on heroic or challenging, or normal, the loot quality coming out of the orange crates and the world crates, it's the same no matter what. Every yes. once in a while, you get a really good roll on something, but like 90% of it's trash. 80% of it's purples. The remaining 10 that are gold, one in every 50 items will be awesome. Like I've gotten some of the god rolled items I've gotten out of orange crates. I've gotten a lot of strikers gear out of orange crates, but you know, like I don't like why turn the difficulty level up if the loot doesn't get better. Right, exactly. And they and on State of the Game, so there's two things. The reason I asked you about the hard versus challenging, and you did mention the loot on State of the Game, they did acknowledge they are reworking the loot that they don't they didn't expect, and it shouldn't be dropping purples on challenging and hard and stuff like that. That that should be dropping golds and better better gear. But they did say that they feel that the normal and the hard difficulties are in a good spot. They like where those are as far as the challenge, quote-unquote. 
So mm -hmm. they, they want to rework challenging and heroic, but they think hard's at a good spot. They want challenging and legendary and stuff like that to be, you know, super challenging, but not as bad as it currently is when it scales. So yeah, they did they did mention bad. those on the state of the game as well. So that's why I was asking. I kind of set it up there for you. Well, and I'll be honest, and you and I lived through this and actually enjoyed ourselves through it, but um, there's a little, like, I don't know, remembrance of 1.3 in the Division 1 in all of this, right? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feels a little bit like that. Well, and, and the good thing with 1.3 1. 1. is they came right after that with 1.4, which was a fun time. So they did. It sucks that they have yes. to go through it again <laughs> if they're going through it again. But at least there was a, a positive turn at last time they had this happened. So that's the only problem with that um, Airburst Seeker, man. Like, it is uh, woefully difficult to target. Like, extremely unpleasant to target. And especially on difficult content, because uh, the the bad guys that end up acting like, uh, you know, Olympic vaulters jump over everything and whatnot, like, man, do they make targeting that thing yeah, super difficult. Just got another wave. Snipers are real no matter what level they are in this game now. Oh, yeah. That sniper's down. Whoa. Oh, bad guy's over here. Bad guy gone. In a bad position. Gonna go ahead and move back. And I think we talked talked about it last time, but this time they definitely with the challenging and the different the AI and stuff. You definitely have to play your cover more too. It's not a matter of you just can't necessarily face tank like you used Whoa. to be able to. Oh, Bert, what are you doing over there, buddy? Do you have um, a hive? Yeah, you have a hive. Yeah. Let's go from behind. There he is. The shotgunner got right in my face. Hmm. Well, that's what they're supposed to do. Well, they're I not mean, supposed to let them, man. So, than future normal. reference. For future reference, what I'd recommend is not to let the shotgunner get in your face like that. Just, I'm just putting it out there. Same. Thanks, man. I really yeah. appreciate that. I was trying to put a seeker <laughs> on him. PSA. And, uh... PSA. Or no, super good advice. There we go. It's a SGA for you. There we go. All right, before we start shooting at these guys, let me put yeah. my seeker on them. Do your thing. That's how we do it. Mm -hmm. That was quick and easy. Are you primarily using the grudge? No, not from distance. Up close I am. So you're switching to it as you get closer to him? Yeah. So that's the other annoying thing. If I happen, the only problem with CC builds, if, if you happen to, like, get yourself with your air burst, which I know sounds like it, I shouldn't shoot myself with my own air burst, yeah. but if I'm running at them with the grudge... And I happen to accidentally light myself on fire, even the slightest bit. Mm -hmm. um, it makes you run crazy. Which I think is super annoying. <laughs> like, the game just makes you, your guy run all, like, sideways and goofy looking. And I understand, you know, that uh, it's supposed to create like the a feeling of effect. I get I got lit on fire. Um, right. Doesn't mean you have to like but, it. But 
Well, no, 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 no. I think maybe they need to tone some of that stuff down because I think they made it more aggressive than it was. It doesn't need to be so hardcore. Oh, I see what I did. Scared over there for you. Thank you. As usual, I'm just trying to kill steal you, so. Yeah. That's, Whatever you it. can do to make that better. <laughs> I I'm do, exactly. Grateful for. Yeah, I notice you give me occasional kills. That's really all I'm looking for. Every now and then, just give me a kill. Make me feel like I'm doing. Oh, crap. That was horrible aim. Oh, we got a guy in behind us. How'd that happen? Did he spawn there? I love how you act like I should know how he got there. Right. <laughs> well, you know, you saw him, so I was, you know, I was maybe. Like I put him there or right, something. Exactly. You know? Remember the time I made the guy come in behind us? And... <laughs> That's right. You, you're able to drop spawn points as well as seeker mines. What do you think, Bert? Did, Put your head up. did he spawn behind us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't watching. One of us should have been watching. If he got around us like that, one of us should have been watching for it, I think. So this is on hard. And as you can see, hard is... A little cakewalky. A little cakewalky. Enough that we're still kind of considering relatively careful, but not just running up and face tanking everything. Well, I'll be honest, I think you have to always be a little careful. I don't, I don't think, I think the days are gone of being able to um, just walk through any of these, right? Like, I don't right. think that's. Dropping the medic. That guy can cause problems. That guy can cause problems. Don't want him running around for any longer than we can. Always first target. So your strategy I'm not that, for I'm not that kind of guy. I'm 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 cool. You know, I I I'll share. Oh, thanks, buddy. So how are you running your build right now? Are you starting from the back and dropping your seekers, or what kind of strategy are you using for your build as you do this? Well, you have to be somewhat like the seeker targeting sucks. Mm -hmm. I, I may have mentioned that. You, you did mention yes. <laughs> At least you're consistent. Ooh, gold grenade, grenadier guy. So you have to be fairly close because of the targeting for seeker mines. I mean, you don't have to, but if you're not, it's a pretty unpleasant experience trying to trying to hit with them from further away because the targeting is so weird. However, you may have remembered such statements as when you run hard there will be a path to legendary mm, yes that's not what that feels like man no that does not feel that way i agree hold on i'm gonna do your thing Ooh, gold sniper take that person out thank you bye-bye don't mind if i do and while it's not always satisfying gear 2.0 does make deciding on what gear to keep much easier the, the show the roles and the talents and stuff like that right on the right off the bat. So it that's does. A nice thing. Well, I wasn't even sure I'd be able to put together builds, right? Like, yeah, I know. I was, I was going to ask you about that. Now, that, so you have quite a few that you have listed in your loadouts, so you are seeing some diversity a little bit, but you were a little concerned mm -hmm. may not be there. I am, and uh, I've I've enjoyed putting them together. Yeah. I mean, as usual, the problem is there's a bunch of metas, right? And there's going to be metas. There's always metas. Right. Um, right now, and I got the chess piece for this meta. Um, right now, the meta is to run something along the lines of the sacrifice, which is the chess piece with um, perfect glass cannon on it. Okay. And then something with Vigilance on the backpack. Basically run all crit and reds, like no anything else. Be squishy as all get out. And uh, Careful, live off your heels. You just now. 
Yeah, I've seen a lot of people talking glass cannon and stuff like that. But also people are, I don't know if challenging content necessarily is where it's at, but a lot of people also drop in trying to do skill builds and stuff now too. Well, and you said you had you had one. Ouch, 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 ouch. So not and entirely cakewalky. The, there's what's wrong with it, right? Like, you, did you see that? I got CC'd. Mm -hmm. I did have something up and up. got shocked. Yep. And then I'm down. Like, I, I have no recourse, right? Like, I have no way to get out of that. Because I'm so squishy at almost a million armor. So how are you doing? How are you enjoying the season so far? You still have the... What was it? The <clears throat> fo I can't say the words because it's going to make me think of that damn song again. So fo I can say the word out. Yeah, fo oh. FOMO. Or do you feel like they built in pretty good progression that you don't feel like you'll miss a whole lot? Uh, I don't know. Leveling up these things is a lot of work. We'll see what happens next week. I mean, I don't think it's supposed to go away. Depends on what they do with that, right? Like, three... Three control points, three bounties, and three missions. Not three. Nine control points, three bounties, three missions, and a um, and a stronghold. Might be a lot. Oh, for the for the manhunt. That's what you're talking about for the manhunt stuff. But that's that's isn't that kind of the seasonal content? I believe so. Why well, was you talking about the the season ranking and the leveling up that you get as you as you just play? Are you are you seeing it as a kind of a, a roadblock or you it doesn't seem to cause a whole lot of problems just getting the seasonal content no so there's not that's what i was that's what i was curious about yeah the manhunt manhunt is a challenge i mean clearly they decided to make it make it some work and see i i tangentially put that in the category of the season because that came with the season pass correct the manhunts are season pass or are they just DLC in general? I think they're just I in general DLC. I have to go back and look at the game stuff again. Now, what are you running for a build, Negan? Uh, just actually, it's still a, a hodgepodge, as they say. I'm just kind of running uh, actually strikers. It's a four piece striker with a with a Fenris on one piece, and then oh, because I have fifteen percent weapon damage, I'm running the Seska Vorioba gloves. And a Fenris knee pads, but striker four piece on the other ones. Because I wanted to see how, if it was broken or what. And I guess it is. I guess they're saying some of the stacks don't count because of server sync or something like that. Yep. But they had that problem in the Division One. They did. And we've had other stackable talents in this game have had server sync issues in the past, which they've actually fixed. But then uh, apparently those are back. This guy's going to get it. All right. Light him up. Thank you. That worked out well for us. Yeah, so no, it, it seems to be working. I mean, I, I don't really pay like 100% attention to it, but it does seem to be stacking enough where I see some benefit to it. So that's kind of nice. That's what I had. So I wanted to try that out. So that's why I ran. Little little striker four-piece. We got a... Healing drone back there, down. So where's the medic who's dropping these drones at? Um, he's the boss. My seekers don't want to hit him up there for whatever reason. Yeah, I see it. And here's the sponginess we were talking about. There's the nice sponge right there. There he goes, he's down. Oh, and I'm running an LMG with, um, oh, crap. What's the one where it loses stability and accuracy for damage? Unhinged. Unhinged, yes. The new LMG, I really like. It is a... Uh, that is a the, legit gun, man. The Iwi Nevgev, what it's called? Yep. Nice. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Went down no, once. Not, not terrible. So not, not a horrible kick. There's a, a weapon crate a challenge. here. Mm -hmm. Coming towards you. I've got the control points, Potomac Event Center, 101. I just need the bounties. Nice. And, and this then is yours. On, the, on this one. Your is this your first or second zone on the manhunt? 
first. I have all the control points done. All of them. Okay. I still need two more missions in all three bounties. Gotcha. But as we you like doing control earlier, points. It's a lot of work. All right. Well, let's jump back to the boo. To the to the and boo. And we'll we'll do our sign off. And uh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, like I mean, on some hands, after one week, I really like certain things. This game has the potential to be great. For whatever reason, I can't put it down, even though I'm disappointed in some stuff, and even at times angry. I am having fun. All so that do you think said, the, the good outweighs the bad right now, or about fifty-fifty, or where do you, where would you put the the good versus the bad right now? I'd call it fifty-fifty, but it is enough that I am like I'm definitely hooked. I'm definitely hooked. Mm -hmm. Having a hard time putting it down, putting it in a pinch I could, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> right? Which goes without saying for a lot of stuff. Well, my point being, like, when um, next week we get uh, Borderlands 3 Borderlands. comes out. Now, theoretically, I won't be home anyway, so whatever. Um, but um, when that right. comes out, like, I'll probably check that out. Mm -hmm. That is still my favorite, man. And uh, and this is good, but I, I, I think this is in a good spot mostly because I feel like I could like step away from it for a minute and come back and not be lost, lost. which yeah. maybe is good. I thought that wasn't going to be how it was, but I think it is. I love that about Borderlands 3. You can walk away from that for like a month and come back and you're not lost. Destiny, Destiny. if I went back to Destiny right now, I'd be lost. Right. right. So, And I think that's a good yeah. thing, especially what we what we talk about with regards to the builds and stuff is there are people who can put in hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day and get everything God rolled and all this stuff like that. But this game still does reward a little bit of effort. You're not putting in 12 hours a day. I'm not putting in 12 hours a day. And we're still getting stuff, you know, it's RNG, it is all that stuff, but there's still enough things to do. It's still an enjoyable enough that you can, you can take a step back and come back in and, and enjoy it. And yeah, like I, I said, not be punished because you took a week or two off and you're so far behind. Right. Fofomo right. or not. Fofomo or not. This is true. This is definitely true. I can take a little time off and be okay. And I am grateful for that versus the opposite where i could not so yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's cool man I'm, I'm i'm good with it i don't think I don't, uh i don't think i will go away from it and not come back mm -mm. no i'm so enjoying that it. yeah I, I put it more at 75 25 i i think i the as you've pointed out the fanboy in me probably glosses over some of the bad stuff a little bit more because i do enjoy the game a lot <clears throat> What are you talking about? <laughs> maybe a little bit, maybe. All right, so so I'll go I'll go sixty forty. I think there's there's a little bit more good than bad. Um, the sponginess, as we talked about, the health pools and the tankies and stuff like that. That is that is a little bit of a struggle sometimes, and it, and not in a fun way. Not when you have to sit there on the you know, go through eight hundred rounds on your assault rifle. You have to go find another ammo box and you go through another eight hundred just fighting a control point. That's, yeah, dude, that, stuff like that, that is, isn't fun. It's ridiculous. And I haven't run any of the missions on Heroic. I've run a couple on Challenging. From what I understand, the missions on Heroic are even worse, even harder, even more spongy. Like, that's not fun. They they need mm -hmm. to tune that stuff down. That's uh, It's just, it's not fun. It's not pleasant. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to run that kind of hardcore stuff, right? Like... No, not especially when it's like we talked about stuck behind that they want you to progress. They want you to play hard to get challenging, challenging to get heroic, etc. And they're still doing the loot in the fashion they are, where it's not doesn't feel like you're you're progressing by picking up the loot. Especially right. when you see purple drops, you're like that. That's just that's a sad. At moment. the at the end of a heroic encounter, mm -hmm. and then you you pick up purple purple drops, and you're like, uh, something seems off about that. Yeah, absolutely. and it is. That's it is off. It's not right. So, anyway, we've been on way too long. Super so long. Episode. We need so to this talk week. about how do you feel about your beer? How was yours? Mine was pretty good. Mine was kind of a, I'd actually a little bit chocolatey, kind of a little. Um, it's a red ale, so it's it has that red ale kind of finish to it, kind of chocolatey, a little bit of vanilla. 
a little yep. little bitter on the back end, but this one I would probably give I would say seven out of ten. That's a pretty good one. I would definitely drink this one again. Definitely put in my my I will buy again. Red Trolley Ale by Carl Strauss. That's what I like. And yours? What do you think of your juicy juicy or hazy juicy or what was it called? Sort short fuse Lucy Juicy. Lucy Hazy juicy. IPA. Um Yeah. It's an IPA, man. I don't know. Um, <laughs> definitely so last, has hops in it. I was gonna say last week's beer was uh, it's okay. Literally what the what the beer said. So this one's less than okay. It sounds well. Like. Last week's beer was as advertised. Okay, there we go. And so is this too, I suppose. It's it's just you know what it is. It's just not my thing. But for a juicy hazy IPA, it's all right. I could drink this. I can drink it. It's not like I'm not offended. I can drink it. I'm going to say it's a 6 out of 10. It's maybe the best hazy IPA I've had. So on that front, it's good. It's not as good as a New England IPA. And I like my I like my uh, grapefruit IPA, that uh, Elvis juice. I love that drink, that beer. Um, this is not that. But it's okay. So right. there you go. Yep. Give beer six out of ten and seven out of ten. All right. Yep. But then with that, say, this this one's hitting my rotation, but yours isn't going to hit your rotation unless it has to, right? Oh no. Well, it but it's local. I like to support local. So you know, and and by by local I mean very local. Um. So I, I like supporting local. Yeah. You know, maybe uh, maybe I'll get it I'll again. Middle of summer when it's blazing hot out, this thing would be awesome. Gotcha. There okay, it is. cool. There yeah. you go. Yeah. All right. So, on so that with note, that, yep, we're going to sign out. You're up to. I'm up. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to say, see Do ya. the honors. All right. See ya. Have a good week. Hey, we'll buddy. talk to you in two weeks because I'll be gone next week, I think. Probably. Fingers, fingers crossed.